Hello everyone, VJZ32 back again with another edition of What's on Deck, your weekly look at what is going on in the world of playing cards. There's a lot going on, and it's mostly on Kickstarter, so let's get on with it. Let's get it on. So first of all, Bicycle Mystique in Blue from Playing Cards on it. It is funded six days to go. If you haven't checked it out, uh, definitely do. Um... We do have a review coming up on it soon. I don't know if it's going to be up before the project ends, but it's definitely one that is a, a nice stack that you should check out. Next up, we got the Alexandre Dumas Classics Point Cards from Bono 5 Point Cards. 37% funded, 19 days to go. Struggling a little bit, I think, just because there's so many projects that came out in the last couple of days. And this is one of them. The two beautiful decks, as you can see, both different but similar. There is the Mo the Count of Monte Cristo deck and the Free Musketeers deck. Beautiful back design. That's the Monte Cristo one. And here is the Free Musketeers. Just gorgeous back designs. Uh, they are going to be produced by expert playing cards from Master Finish. Um, completely custom. Beautiful tuck cases. Court cards. Very nice. Also custom bases. It reminds me a little bit of like an Usai deck, just a little bit. Nice number cards, very familiar looking number cards on the decks. They're very usable, They're very nice, beautiful, completely custom. Here's the other one. Court cards are similar on both decks, but different in the looks of it. Uh, just very nice and, you know, decent price. Definitely worth checking out. I hope it gets funded. Then there is the Cardistry Playing Cards by Bokobo. It is well funded, 10 days to go, I'm pretty sure, actually I'm not sure if I did show you this one or not. <laughs> we'll have a quick peek. Um, as you can see, it's got purple, black, and white colors. Let me see when it launched. It launched on the 18th, so no, I did not send it, uh, saw it to you, and it funded in a day, 8 hours. This... Uh, is a cardistry deck. It's very reminiscent of a uh, virtuoso deck, as you can see, with a similar idea as the card the uh, virtu decks and other cardistry decks. It's pretty nice. I like it. Nice custom faces. A little bit strange on the court cards, but they work and they fit the the whole idea and the theme of the back design. The jokers could be better. They're just a bookable logo. But it is what it is. Very nice. I like it. Again, and nice colors and everything. And weird number four. <laughs> That's a weird four. But anyways, they're pretty cool. 5,000 being produced. So go check it out. Being produced uh, by USB-C Bicycle Stock Air Custom Finish. As are all bookable playing cards. Then there's the Tally Home Masterclass from Playing Cards Done. Of course, it's funded. 96 minutes to go. By the time this video is up, it will be done. Moving on, Tessa Lattis Playing Cards from Hunky Dory Cards is funded. 32 days to go. Lots of time to get in on that one. Black Stags Custom Playing Cards. But uh, Tessa Lattis, I do like it. It's a colorful deck, nice and vibrant. And obviously good for fluorescing. Probably made by fluorescers. Poor fluorescers. <laughs> Uh, then we got the Black Stakes Custom Playing Cards from Colorado Card Designs funded. Five days to go. Uh, compared to all the other ones that are on Kickstarter, that's the, definitely at the bottom of the list. Not one that I'm interested in particularly, but you might want to check it out. I don't know. It, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, not not one that I would go out of my way to check out or back. Then there's the Bicycle Natural Disaster Tsunami from Collectible Playing Cards. Brand new. The sixth in the seven deck series. The other one will be launching in a couple of weeks, obviously. It is 59% funded, 28 days to go. And as you'll see, again, it is the same back design as the other Element ser Series decks. I think it's the Element Series. I don't even know what it's called. Natural Disasters Series, that's what it is. Duh. And it didn't work. Come on. Um... Similar back, or the same back design, different color scheme. Again, uh, fairly standard. In the faces with uh, a custom color scheme. It's pretty nice. And, um, 
you know, it's definitely a series that's worth checking out. If not now, eventually once they are produced and available on the website. But, of course, they have to get funded for that to happen. So definitely check out their project. And then, of course, there's the Bicycle Natural Disasters Hurricane from Collectible Point Cards. It is also funded 11 days to go. That one is funded. <laughs> the other one will be funded. It's just a matter of time. Air Squadron Point Cards, which is a Bicycle Branded Deck from 88 Industry. I mentioned that one last week. Not a fan, particularly in my, in me anyways. And I know a lot of other people seem to feel that way. It's 32% funded, 40 days to go. Uh, considering all these other awesome projects that just launched the last couple of days, this past week, I don't see this one happening at this rate. I mean, it's getting there slowly. It may happen. It still has 40 days. But, really, uh, again, it's at the bottom of the list for me. Next up, Bicycle Conflict Point Guards from Magic Trick Store, aka Collectible Point Guards. It's 47% funded, 28 days to go. This is by Johnny Lamb, who's done a lot of decks for Collectible Point Guards. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, he's a good artist. Is he on par with Jackson Robinson? Probably not for most people, but he's a good artist in his own right. It's a nice tuck case design, nice back design. Of course, bicycle branded, printed by USB Sierra, because it's thinnest bicycle stock. Uh, completely custom, custom seal, tuck case, back design is very nice. A lot of detail in there. And uh, it's all about the conflict, and as you can see, the court cards are um, they're conflicting, I guess. <laughs> There's two different colors on the court cards, so they're kind of, I guess, they're conflicting with each other, uh, or they're conflicted. Uh, the very nice court cards are, you know, in the same style as some of his other decks. And the pips, in particular, especially if you look at the number cards, are uh, similar to the bicycle air deck that um, just finally came out not too long ago. Uh, not a Huge fan of the sevens like this, they're kind of upside down for me. But it's it's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, but they're pretty nice. Again, definitely worth checking out. Next up, Agenda Playing Cards from Flagrant Agenda. Another nice deck. It's funded, 24 days to go. Can't recall if I mentioned this word or not. Um, let's see when it launched. <coughs> Oh yeah, okay, it just launched this past week, sometime. Um, it's by a brand new creator, so that always, being by a brand new creator always, uh, uh, some people might have concerns about that. Is they're not familiar with this person, they haven't done any projects before, and that's understandable. Uh, but they did, they were promoted by Card Experiment, so I... Hope that's uh, you know a sign of faith in the creator. It's a nice back design and tough case. Beautiful cards. There's also a stretch goal for a black deck, as you can see. And number cards, completely custom yet familiar looking. They have no eyes for some reason. And nice ace of spades and number cards, everything completely custom. A thousand being produced of each, numbered seals. Um, I believe they're being printed in Taiwan. Here's the black one. Stretch goal is $12,000. They are currently at $7,800. So it may or may not make it. Hopefully they do. Hopefully it makes it. Because it is a nice back design in the black. And... Being printed by expert point cards, so it's gonna be good quality. Anyways, moving on, we got the samurai point cards from Jacqueline de Cesar Lavin. Lavin, how do we pronounce that? It's funded 46 days ago. Still a lot of time in that one. I don't know why people do projects that are so long. $50 a deck though, that ain't happening for me. Not for this particular deck. I mean, if it was 10 or 15 bucks, maybe. But 50 bucks. For a deck printed by Make Point Cards, that is so so. I'm not even sure what the back design looks like off the top of my head. You know, it's not going to happen. 
Um, but it had a very low goal, so of course it is funded. Next, we got the bicycle gold dragon point cards from Colin Foley, his second project, second attempt. It's 40% funded, 17 days to go. I'm not sure it's going to happen, especially considering all these other amazing decks that I've launched over the last you know, week or so, last few days, that are going to take money away from that project, no doubt. It's a fairly standard deck. Um, it is what it is. Some people might like it, some obviously won't. May or may not happen. Crazy Dogs from Lynn. Diane Tomlinson is 16% funded, 7 days to go. Not likely to happen. It's been sitting at $201 for some time now. And then there's Vampire Society playing cards from David Pudelwitz St. Albans. 2% funded, 57 days to go. I don't see this one happening, even if it has two months left in it. <laughs> it's a two-month project, which is completely unnecessary. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Either it funds or it doesn't. If you have 30 days, 50 days, 100 days, if it's not going to fund, it's not going to fund. This is a, a relaunch, essentially. There's a vampire deck and a zombie deck, apparently. And we don't really get to see any artwork, except for what you see here. These are the back designs. They're horrible. One-way back designs. Uh, that's also more or less what you see for the faces. They're... Definitely not on par with what you see in other projects and definitely not worth checking out, in my opinion. Then there's the Craft Playing Cards by Benjamin Froelich, which is 13% funded, 7 days to go. Um, hopefully that design, that idea gets put in the trash, <laughs> in the recycle bin. Uh, moving along, it's not going to fund, obviously. There is the Izzo Playing Cards. This is a relaunch by Betty Lee. This is 30% funded, 27 days to go. It's an isometric... Uh, theme deck. This is actually, it says it's a relaunch. I did not get to talk about it previously because by the time I did my video, it had launched and canceled within the same day, and I didn't even, wasn't even aware about it. It's, um, the back design is similar to the other isometric deck I've seen before, obviously. It's got some interesting colors in there, and pinks and blues and purples, and black. The back design is not bad, and I don't mind the color scheme too much, but maybe it could be a little bit brighter, bolder, I don't know. Um, what I don't like is the faces. I see they've given them isometric pips. How exciting. But here we go. These are the faces. They're very minimalist. Those are the number cards. These are the pips. These little dots. That's pretty crappy. That's, I guess that tells you the value. And these are the pips you see in the blue and pink in the center. The court cards, more the same. Just very unimaginative, uncreative. The jokers just say joker on them. <laughs> Not interesting. And this is the original back design apparently. H this says ISO or H N O if you look at it sideways. <laughs> and no, not good. Not that's a horrible back design. The newer back design uh, obviously is much better. I kind of preferred the old. It's a little more purple here. You kind of they turned some of the purple almost into black in the current one. And I think this one was actually a little bit better. But anyways, they're um I mean the back design's okay. Obviously, flourishers might like it, but I'm not sure it's going to happen, and the faces are just too minimalist. Uh, to be printed by USB-C, though, I'm guessing Bicycle Stock here goes in Finis, designed by Felix. Ha! Ha ha! Okay, <laughs> moving along. They get the Raven Purple Haze from Raven Magic. It is funded seven days to go. Uh, if you like the original ones, you're going to want to check this one out. Very nice deck, and I think this one just launched this week as well. It's a two-week project. Funded, one week down, one week to go. Nice, beautiful purple cards. He did change up the... I believe he changed up the Ace of Spades a bit and the Jokers. It's just standard faces as before. These ones are actually going to be printed by Cardamunde on a Cambrick 310 black core paper with 9 C squared thinness. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um... But he's also, I guess, modified the faces a little bit to improve the faces, as you can see. 
minor improvements, which is great. Uh, that design is the same as before in a purple color. The other colors have sold out. It's a nice color. I like purple. I recommend checking it out. And uh, yeah, it's definitely worth it. Don't be turned off by the Carter Moon Day because they do have these stocks and finishes and it should be great. Next up, we got a deck that's expensive, but I like it. $11,000 already. Wow. That's well funded. 15 days to go. This is from United Carters. It is the, hopefully I pronounced this correctly, Dondorf 100 Jakarta playing cards. It's a restoration. Uh, definitely worth checking out if it isn't already sold out. <laughs> um, okay. It's a restoration of some vintage decks to be printed by Carta Munde in Belgium. It is one of the rarest and most spectacular decks ever. And I quote <laughs> what it says there. Um, I'm just reading this quickly to learn a little bit more about it. Basically, uh, in 1833... Bern Bernhard Dorndorf opened his lithographic printing business in Germany, Frankfurt. I think that's Germany. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even sure now. Um, and then in 1933, they celebrated 100 years of history, so they printed these decks. The Dorndorf, 100 Zakarte, uh, obviously 100, 100, 100 celebration. And they gave them to the attendees of the 100th anniversary celebration. They were only given away. They were never sold. And at the time, it was also in the process of being taken over. And they were an expensive deck to produce, and they use, utilized chromolithography and required 28 stones, which is the, the era's equivalent to modern printing plates. 12 colors were used for the backs and 16 for the faces. As you can see, they're extremely vibrant and beautiful. Definitely a must-have for me. I love it. Those very beautiful faces. As you can see, just full of color and detail. Just amazing. Um, they were given away to the customers, of course, of that Jubilee in 1933. They've never been available for sale. Um, they were basically a bridge-sized deck with metallic gold accents on the faces and the backs. Middle-aged type artwork. And you can see, extremely detailed. This is the back design you see here in the orange borders. Obviously, centered like a USB-C deck. <laughs> That's the vintage one, obviously. Uh, but very interesting, uh, unique. You can find out more at World... Um, uh, at that WOPC uh, website. I forget what that site is called now. <laughs> um, there's also a green version, as you can see. And you can get both in this project. There are also gilded decks. And these were restored by Lotrek of Oak Plain Cards, as you can see. Nice, vibrant colors, very beautiful. This is the original on the left. On the right hand side is the restoration. Just gorgeous. It did a very good job. It just it looks basically the same. Minor differences. And they are um, Mike at United Cardist is producing this through uh, with the um, Dondorf, with permission of Dondorf. They are $100 each for the one deck. You can get the Players Edition deck, which is the orange bordered one, for like 20 bucks or more. And uh, those ones, the, the the restoration, the main one is being produced by Carter Mundi in the new stock and finish that they got, I guess. Or it says 310 GSM Black or German Casino Bond stock and hand gilded by Carter Mundi. It will feature the original German KDB indices. The player's deck, which is an optional one, is going to be produced with the standard J, uh, Jack Queen King indexes. And uh, we'll have 
will be printed by MPC on a 290 DSM paper board and flask gilded. And they will come in a nice box set. Again, like the original, these are not available for retail sale. They'll be available only to backers on the crowdfunding. I would not be surprised, though, if they did sell some extras on United Cardists at some point in time. Um, <clears throat> also, they are not authorized to sell the player's deck only, so if you want to get the player's deck, you have to get the other one in the double deck uh, box, which is fine. It's understandable. Um, if you want, you can get the original deck, if you're lucky, on eBay for about a thousand bucks, if not more. That's how expensive they are. They're rare to come by. I'd be surprised if Mike doesn't actually have one in his collection. A couple of collectors definitely, I'm sure, have the originals. Um, but they're very nice. I, I like it. They are expensive. But I think if you're a collector, you're definitely going to want to have this one in your collection. It's a piece of history. So let's move on. And that is why, that is one of the projects, one of the reasons why some of these other projects don't have a chance in hell because... That's a lot of money for just one deck. Anyways, next up we got the Might and Magic Illustrated Playing Cards by Morin Art by Kickstarter Stock. I'm surprised Kickstarter allows somebody to use their name for their, for their project, for their uh, Kickstarter account. That's just weird. I don't think this is going to happen at this rate. Apparently it has some copyright issues. Uh, those logos apparently. Uh, these are jokers. There's evil and good decks, I guess. Um, it's okay. I think the white borders on these court cards is a little bit weird. On that one, anyways, it just seems like it, I don't know, makes it stand out too much or something. The pips are fine. They look similar to other decks, though. The back design is not overly exciting. There's also a white deck, as you can see. More custom pips. Um, apparently, they're not going to be sipping. In, wow. It's going to take three months to complete the design and prepare for printing. Why isn't that done already? Three months to print the cards. Really? Three months? They're going to be packing in January. They won't ship until February. A month to pack. Yeah. Um, I've also seen there's like four different names on this creator's account, so I don't know. The people to buy USB-C apparently. Um, I don't think it's going to happen at this rate, but there is lots of time. They're just not the most exciting decks. And then there is Chrome Kings from Handlords. It's funded, 22 days to go. I'm not sure how I feel about them just yet. Apparently they were designed in 3D, and they're going to be printed in 2D, because that makes a lot of sense. What I don't like is that the sipping costs are about twice what they should be. But it doesn't surprise me because they used to do that on their website as well. So I'm going to wait for it from a third party, if anything. And then we have another beautiful deck. The Honeybee Special Edition Metalux Gold Foil Playing Cards from Penguin Magic. It is funded. 13 days to go. Funded pretty quickly. Um, beautiful. This is all gold foil on the back designs, I believe. And of course on the tuck cases, very nice. They're going to be limited, I'm sure. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And uh, of course designed by Randy Butterfield. I like it. I definitely recommend checking it out. It is 20 bucks each. Actually, that was the early bird, which is sold out to 25 bucks each plus shipping, which is not a bad price for a metal Lux deck, I would say. And uh, then there is the Feta New Z. Playing cards by my Greekdom, which is for a sorority, uh, which apparently nobody wants, <laughs> and it's definitely not luxurious. It's zero percent funded, six days to go, ain't gonna happen unless the sorority girls start providing sexual favors to all the fraternities and get them to buy decks. <laughs> I don't know. 
I, I apologize. I simply saying that, but it's just that's the only way I see it happening. Next, we got the strange playing card set again from John Daniel Taylor, fourth, seventy-two percent funded, fifteen days to go. I'd be surprised if it didn't fund, considering it's a very low goal of you know nine hundred thousand dollars. But it is the same thing we've already seen before in his first card project, and I don't know. It just seems unnecessary to be doing it again. We got another beautiful deck. It's a new Divine Art deck in white gold by Sunish Chaba, Guru Playing Cards. 25% funded, 29 days to go. It features a new tuck case, which is very nice looking, with gold foil on it, I believe, I assume, just like the original. Um, to be put up by Make Playing Cards again, with 330 DSM German Casino Top Quality Black Core Cardstock. That's another mouthful. Hot Stab Gold Foil, Gilded Edges. Only a thousand being produced at a minimum. And um, free worldwide shipping, or actually included worldwide shipping, I would say. And uh, it's a completely redesigned tuck box and back design. Of course, based on Hindu mythology. And here's your, there's a nice gilding. I really like this deck. Check out my review of the, the original one. Beautiful deck. I like it. I recommend checking it out. And here's the back design on this one. All gold foil, gilded edges, very nice decks. There's the original one. I, I think maybe the gold on the black looks a little bit better than gold on white, but it's still very nice and um, worthwhile checking out. And then we got Dragon Series playing cards by Greg Maidman. 46% funded, 15 days to go. I don't think it's going to happen. It got off to a bad start. And it hasn't gotten anywhere. It hasn't gotten too far so far. Uh, then there is the Tattoo Ink deck from Andreas Kurakularis. 59% funded, 45 hours to go. It may make it at the very end, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll keep my eyes on that one just to have a look to see if it funds or not. Uh, Sinister deck. Which is a lefty deck with famous left handed people on it by Tiger Smith. Funded, nine days to go. The artwork is okay on the faces. Might not be for everyone. The indexes are on the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side, like a standard deck, so that left handed people can use it. Which is fine. But the back design is what you see there that says a sinister deck. It's horrible. One way back design, and it's not good. Then there is Glamour Nugget Casino Point Cards by EPCS. I think I mentioned this one last week. It's funded, 18 hours to go. I only like the black deck because the pink deck is not based on any Golden Nugget deck ever that existed. And it's just a horrible shade of pink that, I mean, you can't even make out the writing when you look at that. I can see the black deck pretty clearly. I can see that it says Glamour Nugget. And that it looks like a golden nugget deck. But the pink one, it looks white. It looks or it looks all one color. You know, you can't see the writing. It doesn't stand out enough. It's just just like the pink fontaines, not a big fan of that color. Then there is Design 100 percent plastic playing cards. Classic Baruch by Jason Hawley. 30% funded, 36 days to go. Apparently he had a fair amount of people that wanted a bridge-sized plastic deck. But I'm not sure it's going to fund. On Kickstarter, plastic decks usually don't fund very rarely. I think, apparently, here we go. Many supporters from PokerChipForum.com requested that they produce a bridge-sized deck with a jumbo index. Why? Why can't they just get some other decks that already exist that are the same thing? Um, I think... To my recollection, the only plastic deck that I know of that funded is a set that was put out by PlayingCards.net that you can get on their website, and and that was it. Most other plastic decks, I mean, the artwork is fine, They're nice custom standard uh, type court cards. I have had some design decks. I'm not sure if I still have a review on my channel if I ever had a review. Whoops. Um, interesting aces. 
you know, it's interesting artwork. Um, but just plastic decks usually don't do very well on Kickstarter, and even less so bridge size decks. But it may or may not happen, who knows. Moving along, Custom Fairview Playing Cards by Tracy Dolson, which is for some high school in Colorado, Boulder, Colorado to be exact. 40% funded, 9 days to go, again, not going to happen. And then we have a Calaveras de Azuka Luxury Edition by Natalia Silva. This is not going to be cheap. It's funded, 20 days to go, apparently a very low goal of 700 or 600 bucks, 500 bucks. $500 goal, and they're at $800. dollars that's pretty horrible when you have to have a goal that is that low just to fund a deck. I expect a little bit more from her, but we'll see what's up with this one right away. Um, and then there is Obscure Movie Monster Point Guards by Mark Monlux. Funded, 49 minutes to go. By the time this video is up, it will be done. Not a big fan of that one myself. Oh, hugs, punches, and farts. Okay. <laughs> Moving along. I think that's it for playing cards on Kickstarter. But you never know. Alright. And. $35 for a deck. Only 200 being produced. Apparently it has French gold foil paper. On a tuck case. Custom gold foil sealed, numbered, and signed. Aha! So a very interesting looking tuck case with a skull on it. It looks like it's just randomly glued on there. So this is, uh, it's printed by USPC. So what this is, is the Calaveras, uh, the Zuka deck that she made before that's been printed by USPC and should be shipping out soon with a brand new overpriced unnecessary deck, or uh, tuck case I should say. That's the way I feel about it. It's just a cash grab. Uh, I apologize, Natalia, but there's no reason for this. There's no reason for doing a project for something that already exists. Except that it's, uh, it's just a different tough case. Uh, extra limited. I am tired of people like her producing decks that are super limited. Just to uh, make extra money. Um, anyways, let's go on to... UnitedCardist.com. There's a couple of things I wanted to mention here. Whoops. Green Fontaines, by the way, are apparently shipping. They, they sold out pretty quickly in a pre-sale on Zach Miller's website some time ago. They are, pre, they are shipping now. They were available on Art of Play. They sold out pretty quickly. I uh, Pretty certain they'll be available on other websites. So if you want to get them, keep your eyes open, or you might miss out. I, they're already on eBay, I believe, and probably pretty expensive. <laughs> um, I want to mention now, and I want to. Ooh, I want to mention. I forgot there's one here I want to mention. Also, um, the Erdnay's Madison decks or set, the magic thing, is available once again on Lucas' website. I think that's pretty ridiculous and should have known from the start that that was going to be the case. Actually, I think everyone did know that was going to be the case. They pulled it from the website citing that there was death threats made against Daniel Madison and said they weren't going to be selling them anymore. And they stopped selling them, but they kept them on the website. And now, all of a sudden, they're available again. I mean, really? Just unnecessary. Um, then there is this. Shovel Knight Playing Cards, designed by Laura Verdon. Available for pre-order on fangamer.com. 
the very interesting. Apparently, it's based on some video game that I've never heard of before. Put it by USB C as with their previous stacks. Nice, vibrant colors, interesting court cards, nice one way back design. <laughs> um, you know, definitely, it's one I'm checking out. It's only, um, there's only a couple of bucks, three or four bucks to ship to Canada, so sold. <laughs> Why not? Um, then we have Angels and Demons Playing Cards by Timothy Creamer. I wanted to mention this one. It's been cancelled. As it should be. It is... I guess they're selling a distant Angels. And then there was a Demons deck. It might have been a stretch goal. I'm not sure. Inspired by the Heroes Online games. However, they failed to get permission to use the artwork or the symbols that are on the back design of the cards and that is a no-no. They were going to be printed by USB-C. Also, other copyrighted stuff, issues. Um, particularly, this one right here. I'm going to show you something. Come on. If you look at, and I'm, I'm going to assume this is not the only one. There could be others. <laughs> um, look at this image right here on the Ann Stokes deck. Let's see if you can find a better one. Right here, check out this chick holding the rose. And then, check out Well, she's pretty close. I know there's one Maybe they removed it. I think they removed it. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> um, yes, the Queen of Diamonds from this deck, which you don't see anymore for some reason, was this girl. Ripped off the Bicycle and Stokes deck. I'd be surprised if there isn't more girls that come from this deck, but it was the same thing, basically. And this deck... Is actually basically a relaunch. It's the same artwork as a previous campaign they did a couple years ago called the Romantic Playing Cards, which did not fund. Um, and this one, this one was going to fund, but it got canceled for legal reasons. And then we have third edition Orbit decks in purple. What timing? They released these at the same time as the Purple Haze Raven decks. But they're available for pre-order on the on Chris Brown's website, uh, theorbitbrown.com. Also available at Hocus Pocus. You might want to check out both to see which one has a better shipping rate because um, this one, and it is a pre order, but I think they've been produced. If you look at this one, and this one, by the way, is also PayPal only, which is a no go for me. Come on, don't fucking freeze on me. Part of my language. It's fifteen dollars for one deck in the U.S. and it's a little bit cheaper for two and free. But if you go to international, it's twenty-six bucks shipped, which is not bad, I guess, depending where you are. But if you go to HocusPocus.com, it may or may not be a better shipping rate. So, um, and you might want to combine it with other decks that they have for sale as well. And that's HocusPocus.com. Hocus Das Pocus. Next up, we have, I wanted to mention this one, the Marquee Point Guards from Brendan Hong. It has been cancelled.
his bid cancelled, that's the marquee playing cards, and he posted an update, and it looks like he is done. Actually, apparently, the Dynasty decks he produced previously was going to be his last deck, but then he got an itch to design some more, and he wanted to do this marquee, and he did it, but it was not going to fund. They had $28,000, they needed $35,000. It was not looking like it was going to make it. So he canceled the project and posted an update. And uh, Basically, it looks like he is done with designing decks. It's one less designer trying to get my money. <laughs> um, he did do some nice decks. And, I, you know, it would have been nice to see this one happen. The prices were perhaps a turnoff for some people. Also, I want to say that I think that the... Imperial Edition in this one is completely unnecessary. I don't know why people are always doing projects where they have decks that are extra expensive, ultra limited, with just a different tough case. It seems unnecessary. And although it was selling, obviously, and people were asking for more, 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 uh, I just don't see why people keep giving so much money for decks are just different tough cases. I mean, I don't see the big deal. I ha got tired of tuck swaps a long time ago because it is just a different tuck case and they want so much more money for it. You want me to, to sell out money for a really limited deck, then make it truly unique and different, not just a different tuck case, but the cards as well. My opinion. Otherwise, don't bother. But anyways, that is that for this week. I uh, don't think there was anything I need to go over. I didn't get the check. Um, nothing else to talk about from Fear 11 or Dan and Dave or anything else that I can recall. Masterpieces. Um... These new decks that are designed by Toast Prod should be available soon. I'll see if there's anything I caught the cards worth mentioning. Uh, the masterpieces from Pokeball that was funded. I decided not to get that one because it's. I'm a little bit tired of decks where they just have random images on every card just for the hell of it. <laughs> okay, I caught the point cards. They got. <laughs> Bicycle Aves Uncaged playing cards. Ah. Well, lunch is ready. So I got, uh, you know, it's qu very quickly. Bicycle Aves Uncaged from Lux playing cards, I think. It's more or less the same thing I've seen before. Maybe just a new printing. There's also Frostbite playing cards. That is available. I wasn't a big fan of it. That design is okay, but the color scheme on the face has kind of turned me off. Bicycle Nix from Collectible playing cards. There's also a retail version of the Bicycle Denim cards that they designed, put on Kickstarter. Uh, looks like there might be some minor differences. For instance, these dots you see on the front of the tuck case and it's a standard USB-C seal it'll probably be available at the USB-C's website as well and also there is I might have mentioned this one before a uh, the prism gilded unnumbered uh, just the extras the overrun you can get and suck my deck <laughs> I don't know who produced this one I don't know what company produced it just that it's produced by luxury playing cards um, I'm not going to get it myself, not at the moment, I don't think, anyways. Let's look at the, there's the back design, it's not bad. It's pretty nice back design. The Jokers, um, lots of blood. And that's where it turns me off a little bit. Here you see again, the court cards, they're just animals. They look like they've been blown up with a shotgun or something, there's blood splatter everywhere. And that seems a little bit like, I don't know, animal cruelty or something. It's just a bit of a turn off. I don't see the point in a deck where you got animals surrounded by blood. It just does nothing for me. 
Uh, the number cards are nice. It, having <laughs> black and pips and red pips mixed is a pretty interesting idea. The diamonds seem really small in comparison to the hearts and some of the other pips. I don't know what's up with that. But anyways, it's an interesting deck. Also, a bit of a turn off because I don't know what company printed them. I don't know if it's USB-C, if it's Taiwan produced, if it's MPC. I have no idea. It doesn't tell me that. Apparently, there is a foil on the tuck case. And um, it's completely custom. It's an interesting deck. You might want to check it out. And that is that. Of course, if you go to cartableplaincards.com, don't forget to use the code VJOZ for to save 10% on your order. And I'll see you next time with more. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, thumbs up. Let me know what you think. See ya.